ncmreview.com here with Retro Rampage Podcast. Why are we? Why do we call it Retro Rampage Podcast? Well, we're going to talk about a controversial YouTuber. Why? I don't even know. But take it away, Zach. You know more about this uh, uh, conniving she beast more than I do. I know about her past crimes. Wouldn't that you be know great if, if, like, we started talking about it and our computers just shut down again, like the last time? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. She cursed us. Yeah, we made an episode about her at one point early on, and your computer just shut off and we lost the episode. Yeah, that's right. But we're talking about Anita Sarkeesian. Take it away. What's going on with her again, man? She's she's always uh, riling people up and pissing people off. I guess she's made this new Kickstarter campaign for another bunch of videos to make. When the last one she did... I mean, I'm looking, I, I wish I could find the original Kickstarter so I could see all of the like, you know how they put like, if they make this much money, they'll make this many videos. Yeah, the or, different tiers, yeah. Let me look here. The Kickstarter campaign was enormously successful, raising its initial goal of 6000 inside 24 hours and eventually raising nearly 159000 following Sarkeesian to work the project full time. So... She got more than she ever asked for, and she she did, I think, I could be wrong, but I think out of like 12 videos, she did three of them, and that's it. Never did the rest of them that she had, you know, planned and laid out on the website or the Kickstarter campaign, and now, you know, it's been a couple of years, she still hasn't finished them, and now she's done. Moving on to something else. It's like, no, no, finish what you said. I don't. At that point, who are we blaming? Do you do you do you blame her for uh, taking advantage, or do you do you blame the people that are letting her take advantage at that point? You know, yeah. Like, good lord, I mean, she reminds me of uh, Hillary Clinton. I don't understand who the fuck supports her. How does she? <laughs> how is she at the level she is? Who is backing her? Who's giving her one hundred fifty grand? Corporations. Like, I mean, she. It, from for I get it. From our perspective, she just looks reviled. So we're not on the perspective of whoever the hell's supporting her, but I just don't understand. Same thing with like it's like a Hillary Clinton thing. Mm-hmm. I, and I'm not trying to get political here, but that's the same type of thing. Like I don't I, like what, she, she. How is she even here? I don't yeah. understand it. Like who's voting for it? Who's support? Who's giving money to Anita? Who's, I don't understand it. Um, like but, do, so, do you think Anita believes the things she's saying, or do you think? She's just doing it. She's riling people up. She's, she's kind of a troll. Her hits. Yeah. Yeah, what she's a big troll. Um, dude, she took it all the way to fucking Congress, did she not one time? Yeah, the UN or something. That's pretty far for a troll, man. I don't know. Yeah. I think <laughs> she, she's legit. I think she's a straight up uh, a neo-feminist. And I have no problem with, you know, equal rights and feminism. But these neo-feminists, they got it all wrong. <laughs> she's yeah. got it all wrong. I mean, she's she's talking about fictional characters and fictional video games you know, being sexist when we live in a world where real sexist things are happening. You know what? And and I'm almost, I get it. You know, maybe I get it. Maybe the majority of men are creating these, uh, bosomy sexist woman video game characters, but is it, but, but there's no women that are doing these characters too. Yeah. I I mean, she, she did a video recently where she was talking about women's butts and she was talking like she showed, um, if you can't hold a pencil on it, it's not an it's not a real ass. <laughs> well, no, Zach. She, she made this Just weird kidding. thing. She said something at one point where uh, the original Tomb Raider. She showed footage from it, and she mm-hmm. she talks about how Laura's butt is in the center of the screen the entire time, which it's not. And I mean, it's a third person game. It's about puzzle solving. You need to see the character. It's. It seems like she. Does it's one of those want- things where something's going to be wrong if you're looking for something to be wrong. Yeah. You know, she's looking for it. But then she talked about how, like, oh, if it's a male character, they go out of their way to cover their butt. And then she showed, like... Uh, There's a lot of dicks in modern games. There's a lot <laughs> of dicks in modern games. Yeah, well, she she showed, like, uh, Watch Dogs, where he has the long coat, and Assassin's Creed, where he has the thing. But that's the thing, like, when... They're doing it based on, like, what men are attracted to. So men like butts and stuff like that. It's mm. It's just, you know, it's... Gene- it's fucking biology. We're attracted to stuff like that, and women they're attracted to stuff like you know the voice, sho- yeah, the, the voice, the, the big shoulders, broad shoulders, yeah, not the, naked the shoulders, jawline or whatever, jawline. It, I don't know. I she looks for things to be wrong. Some, some bottom line is people are a little too sensitive, 
you're always going to be offended with something. At the end of the day, she's looking for something sexist. And who knows? Even if Laura Croft's ass did happen to be in the middle of the screen, and maybe it was bigger, dude, I don't think the men that were making that game, because, I mean, especially at that time, it was a male-dominated industry for sure. Mm -hmm. It still is, but you know what I'm saying, back then. It just came second nature, I guarantee you, for the men to create what was on their minds, right? Yeah. Now, I get it, it comes off sexist, but... I guarantee you they weren't thinking about it as hard as this person's thinking about it. Yeah. I you remember know? she did like a video where she was talking about the original Tomb Raider 2 and she's like, yeah, her boobs are so big, like unrealistically, they're obviously sexist. And then whenever the, you know, the re, uh, what's, what are they, what do they call re- those? Remaster, the re- re-release? The reboot. Uh, reboot. They did yeah. the reboot and they did a, a new character model and they made her boobs smaller and more realistic and, you know, like they make sense to the scale of the rest of her body. And she's like, they made them smaller. They're obviously just trying to masculinize her. But you know what? It's kind of like what you were saying uh, a moment ago where, you know, what people are attracted to biology and whatnot cartooning. Okay. Look at women. Cartooning was always cartooning. The girls were always really figured. Even Betty boot for fuck's sake. She had really full figured hips, you know, um, Jessica Rabbits, you know. But the thing is, is you're right. What are women attracted to? Look at Johnny Bravos. That's You think guys' shoulders are that big? You know what I'm saying? Do you think their mama. fucking jaw lines are like that? Yeah. Mercy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that show is awesome. It's it's the same type of thing, is it not? Yeah, it's the exactly. Same, exactly. It's like, it's cartooning. Everything's and, embellished. And it's weird that she's talking about, like, you know, Laura Croft. Like, that's a strong female character. You know what I mean? She's, She's not a victim down, yeah. or anything. She's saving people. Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. And at, the, and at the end of the day, though, the thing that grinds my gears is I don't care who you are. Me, you, um, Anita. We're all hypocrites. We can all, we're all guilty of fucking going up against our own code. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, so you're trying to tell me, so Anita Sarkeesian, she's trying, I'm not, oh, I, I fucking hated that we're even talking about it because I don't like to give attention to this gossip shit and these people, but is she trying to say that she's never lusted after a guy, she's never done anything that would, uh, you know, somebody else would deem sexist or offend somebody, and we're human beings, mm-hmm. and, and so the only day, so in, we live in a society where you're not a, hit, a hypocrite unless you get caught. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Unless you're caught on record. Unless you're caught with somebody's cell phone, <laughs> uh, tap phone call. You're only, you know, you've never said something you regretted immediately after in private. Mm-hmm. And you, you never you never fucked up and slipped something. And maybe you caught, you immediately felt bad about it. You know, back yeah. in the day, back pre-internet and all that, um, you could. Well, maybe not Paula Deen. Well, no, the internet and everything came back to buy Paula Deen in the ass. But back then, you could get away with that shit. You know, you know how many people, you know how many famous actors and maybe even philanthropists and really good people. Maybe even Martin Luther King had a bad fucking day. Mm-hmm. You know what? He dealt with oppression and, you know, that's what he rose up against and he's a great human being. You don't think somewhere, it's not even, that it's not possible that... On one of his darkest days of experiencing racism, he didn't show a little bit of shade right back in his darkest yeah. hour. And, you know, he of course he felt bad. You know, he, he came back from that. But we all fucking, you know, it's like it's like the kid that uh, curses God. Now, is it blasphemy? You know, I guess by biblical standards it is. But you know what? People get angry at what they don't understand. People get angry at God. You get angry with things you don't understand. It's, it's completely natural. And then people kind of come full circle, you know, and, and they kind of come to their peace of whatever they're dealing with, right? I just, mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to say, I don't know, I'm just kind of riffing here, but I just, I don't understand. Everybody's a hypocrite. But like I said, it bites everybody in the ass. Hulk Hogan, the moral of the story is you get $140 million. Oh, God. <laughs> that was, he, dude, you know what? We're going to kind of transition into Hulk Hogan for a second. I know it's not video game shit or uh, YouTube shit, but... You know what? This guy, I, I've watched interviews with him ever since he got divorced from his wife and the videotape went out. He just, he, he comes off like a big bitter son of a bitch, right? His life, his life mm-hmm. is going down the toilet. He lost a whole shit ton of money in that divorce. And, uh, you know, he, I watched, I watched an interview with him on Howard Stern. He literally didn't have that much money. That's why he kept seeing him on like fucking Telerent commercials, fucking check cashing commercial. He literally was going broke from all that shit. And then, um, you know, and his, his 
friendship with uh, fucking Bubba the Love Sponge was going down. So everything was horrible. He was bitter. But I, you watch the footage of him and Cora getting awarded $140 million. And it, I, I guarantee you, yeah, he feels tarnished. But in the back of his mind, he's like, man, this shit was all worth it. Because I guarantee you, he didn't have no $140 million. I, that's, that's probably what he, he's worth more. Than, that's what he's worth more now than he was then. Yeah. Because I guarantee you, I get it. He's the figurehead. But, you know, that's WWE money, man. I, that's not... He, I mean, Hulk Hogan didn't have no $140 million. He was taken care of. But he's yeah. in a better situation now, man. I'm betting uh, Linda, his fucking wife, is probably wishing she held out a little longer on that divorce. Because <laughs> he's sitting pretty now. I mean, I don't know. I'd almost feel like it was worth it. Uh, you know, because he's over it. That fucking sex tape was a few years ago. Nah, he's he's over it. You know, the whole saying the N-word thing. That's that's that. He, he moved on to something else. He moved on to greener pastures. But he's way over that. No one cares anymore. We live in the age of the internet where, you know, give it a generation, Zach. If it's not already there, our kids and our grandkids, we will get to a point in about 20, 30 years where 9 out of 10 people will have a fucking nude pic somewhere online. You know, because things get tapped, things get compromised. Everything ends up online. There's going to be no shame anymore. Sex tapes, are they're not that big of a deal anymore, really. Are they? They're not. Yeah. You know, whatever. Uh, but whatever. Everybody's a hypocrite. I need a Sarkeesian. The only thing is, is we can't prove it because, well, it hasn't ha- she hasn't been recorded yet. But, you know, and, she, and frankly, she's not famous enough to where it'll happen. Because mm-hmm. the, only, the only footage you see of her is on our pre-edited fucking YouTube video. So she's safe there. She's not, if she was a big enough star and she was under more, if she was under a limelight, she would get busted. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's why I think we should, that's why I think we should, uh, I don't know. I'm not saying people shouldn't be held accountable for certain things. You know, it's it's, a, it's kind of a it's kind of a faded line. You know. Yeah. You know, like, well, you got to make an example out of certain that we that we don't accept certain things in this society. But at the same time, it's like nobody's perfect. And uh, where do you separate personal with uh, an, an art form? Because it's like the Mel Gibson thing. You know, I'm, Mel Gibson. He's a great storyteller. I, I was a big fan. I'm a big fan of his acting. A big fan of his movies. I fucking love Mel Gibson shit. Um, you know, and I get it. He had one shot, and he kind of came back from it. It took him a couple years, but he did it again. So <laughs> it's like, all right, maybe that's Mel Gibson's fault. Like, all right, you kind of, oh, you fucking came back from the first one. Um, but then you have that whole Pantera Phil and Selma thing, right? That that that's we're just oh, kind of yeah. we're going down a rabbit hole with all this this online shit. This is this is not shit that he never used to do and get drunk and do on yeah, stage. Yeah, I remember hearing was, people saying that he's done stuff like that. But now, before. we're in the widespread YouTube era where uh, a cell phone video will go viral overnight. And, um... You know what? Take it take it as it is. If somebody gives a genuine apology like he did, I think you should... I think at that point, it's up to the receiver to forgive it and let it go. Otherwise, you're fucking salty. Um, mm-hmm. cause I mean, you take it as it is. I don't know about you guys. I watched that apology. He, that it was a pretty genuine apology. He, he I was, didn't see it. I it didn't was even know pretty, he it, did. was a, it, it was a pretty genuine apology. And, uh, you know what? He fucked up. He was drunk. He said some stupid shit. Get a life. You know, it's like, whatever. I, I think it was adequate. You know, did he deserve an apology? Yes. He should have apologized. And he did. It was a good one. And, uh, it's just whatever, man. People say dumb shit. I don't care. I mean, Zach, you have loved ones that in private, in your own personal quarters, have said things that would get any famous person in trouble, right? Yeah, of I course. think everybody does. Everybody has. So, bottom line, ugh, fucking Nita Sarkeesian. <laughs> it's not even the bottom line anymore. But yeah, this whole thing with her Kickstarter, it's dumb. Uh, maybe the people that are supporting her, like I said, who are these people? Where are they coming from? I have no idea. Um, but yeah, if that's the case, you're telling me that she didn't uh, come through, no follow through on her last one. Well, I mean... The people back are stupid. I guarantee you it's a lot of the same people. Mm-hmm. Mm. On a brighter note, Nintendo's at their uh, their shit again. Uh, kind of spit on their fan base a little bit. Have you heard about the Super Mario Maker? They're pulling levels. And people are pissed. I'm a huge fan of Super Mario Maker. Um, that's, that's absolutely my speed these days. That's a game where I can sit down and I end up getting carried away with it, and I, I do play it for a long time. But it's not even, it's not that I can't play for an extended amount of time, but something like Mario Maker, it still has instant gratifications mm-hmm. within it. You know, you can sit down and play it for a few hours, but you're getting instant gratification along the way. You know, I built this level, I added something on this level, I could start this. 
um, it's really touch and go, and that's relaxing. It's knowing that I can. There's and knowing that there's many really. Good, there's a, a stopping point anywhere, basically, mm-hmm. where I can go do something, go take a shower, go take a shit, turn it off, go you know, go to the mail, go, go to the fucking post office. It's not like you're in the middle of a fucking dungeon. <laughs> it's like oh, I gotta yeah. beat this fucking dungeon. That's why. That's why they they should get rid of like checkpoints and just make it where you can save anywhere now. Like it's 2016, we should be able to save anytime. Yeah, I mean, the game. yeah, I mean, I don't know. And this is me being old, though. Maybe it's not that way for kids, but like, I don't know. Me isn't. If they want to retain certain demographics that are that grew up with these games, we all work now. We got a million things going on. It's really tough to find mm-hmm. spaces of time where we absolutely have to commit to, you know, two hours. Yeah. Sometimes it's tough. Like, give me the option. Yeah. Um, so, but anyway, Super Mario Maker. Um, it's pretty much gotten unanimous praise. It's awesome. I mean, it's a perfect 10. It's such a fun game. Um, they've hit it out of the park. Uh, the only thing that you can nitpick it for is, hey, give us more uh, backdrops, give us more stage uh, templates. But, you know, that's just kind of like give us more, give us more. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but um, I don't understand why Nintendo would be pulling levels. Uh, I don't know if you read up on it. I don't know if it was... I don't know if the targeted uh, users were posting stuff that was subjective or... Mm-hmm. Or what it was, but I mean, it seems like it was a blindsided thing. I mean, from what I've read on it, it's without warning. People are just kind of like waking up, playing, and hey, their shit's gone. These are people with big channels, I guess. You know, yeah, big- so is it like deleting it from the internet, or is it deleting their copy of it in their system, or what? <sighs> That's a good point. I don't know. If it, like if they if if they like found levels that said like suck my balls or something in coins. Like mine? Yeah. You're going to rat me and out just, on the fucking air? And then decided, like... They're going to get me oh, next, get asshole. I mean, yeah. the game is rated E. Yeah. No, no, so they won't let you put shit like that. They Well, though, here's the thing. They won't... They won't let you title your levels with swear words. And yeah, I'm already kind of running the risk of having sucking my balls on there. <laughs> I mean, somebody might be offended at anything. Uh, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I get all that. I get all that, um, but from what I understand, these are like blindsided things without notice, uh, without warning, and I don't know if there was any resolution to that. I don't know if Nintendo kind of ever kind of addressed it, you know? Yeah, that's what I would guess. And I don't even like I'm playing devil's advocate. I don't even I don't even agree that that should be. I think people should be able to write whatever they want. I don't know. We live in such a we we live in such a world. I think everybody just needs to grow a thick skin because you can't have it all, man. You can't have, you can't be overly sensitive PC police and yet expect to just change everything. Yeah, you can't have everything. Like yeah. either either grow a thick skin and get accustomed that everything's going to be accepted, whether you get pissed off or not, or just don't get pissed off. There, I mean, you can't. I don't. Know, it is. It's a weird world, man. I don't understand it. Um, at the end of the day, little stuff like that isn't going to affect children who aren't already fucked up. Yeah. It's so weird, too, because that's the, like, go-to excuse they go to. Like, what about the kids? Think about the children. But it's like, you know, in so many instances, like, with GTA, the parents are taking them and buying it for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It it just happened with that freaking movie, uh, the, what's that new superhero movie where, where parents were shocked that it was for adults when it was rated R. Oh, Deadpool? Yeah. It's like, you're an idiot. Yeah. I think a big a big part of it is, like, when we were kids, like, my grandmother, yeah, they my grandmother and stuff would, would be all about that. It better not be satanic or it better not be violent because she came <laughs> from that generation. But the yeah. kids now that are obtaining Re- uh, Grand Theft Auto V, their parents are my age. They, yeah. they, they were brought up in the generation with Mortal Kombat in the desensitized generation. Yeah, so that, that's what's so weird about it is like I remember getting Vice City when it came out. My dad got it for me and watched me play it and was like, this looks fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so weird. Yeah. Yeah, my dad used to walk around the house uh, pointing his finger at me and taunting me like Shao Kahn telling me I sucked. It's like it's like our parents back then <laughs> knew that we weren't stupid enough to think that like Hey, the game has you shooting a gun, so we should do it in real life. You know what I mean? Like I said, the kid's got to be fucked up already. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is it starts at the household, man. It starts with the parenting. It, start, it starts and ends with the parenting. Because, I mean, you got you can't shelter a kid from the fucking world. 
mm-hmm. shit goes on in the world. As a parent, you just got to make sure they understand the difference between <laughs> right and wrong, fantasy and reality. Bottom line. Yeah. Um, and, and I, if your kids go to school, they already know what sex is and all that well, stuff. Well, and also it's like the whole thing with, hey, let's censor video games. But, hey, let's give them headsets so they can all talk to strangers online. Yeah. <laughs> and where they hear all kind. My little brother, my little brother, he was, he, dude, he's been an avid online gamer since he was six years old. And, dude, I'd come over and visit, and this would be a six-year-old bo- Coke bottle rim glasses little kid, and he'd say shit like, felching, cum sucker, motherfucker. I'm like, what are you learning? I didn't know what any of this stuff was until I was like 17. <laughs> it's just because they're online in this open forum talking to all these other kids and adults spitting all kinds of threats and whatever. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. I, it's, it's just, we have this open line of communication with the internet and it's not going to change. You can't, you can't take it back. So we kind of have to adapt with it and just school people and knowing, Hey, okay, look, you know, you're going to be surrounded by all this stuff. Don't bite into this. This is fantasy. Yada. Yada. I knew a kid when I was in fourth grade, God bless him. He's a sweet kid. Um, he was one of those kids where he was super sheltered, right? Yeah. And he was only allowed to watch rated G movies. That's it. And only movies that are rated G are Disney. That's it. Like, literally. Yeah. And he wasn't even... PG was not allowed. And I get it. Fourth grader, he shouldn't be watching bad movies. Fourth grade, though. You know, when I was in fourth grade, we were all obsessed with the uh, X-Men, Right. X Men mm-hmm. '90s cartoon, the action figures, uh, Mortal Kombat was all the rage. I know that wasn't it wasn't meant for us, but it was meant for us, right? Mm-hmm. Mortal Kombat three was the fucking big thing in 1995 in fourth grade. But this kid, he was warped, man. Like we were all playing, we were all bringing our uh, Mortal Kombat action figures, our X Men comic books, and talking about the le- the last episode of whatever. And uh, we were bringing in like strategy guys from Mortal Kombat, right? And we were just doing that stuff at recess. And he was literally like, let's play pretend. <laughs> That's what he used to say. That's how he would say it. That's how he would sound. He like, let's play pretend. And he would be in this fucking Barney world. And he was completely sheltered. Now, if this was the internet era back then, I mean, he might have, he might have slipped through the cracks a little bit. But this is before the internet was prevalent and all that stuff. And literally, they could mold him however they wanted to. He knew nothing besides the fucking aristocrat cats, you know? You know, remember back when, like, oh, man, what what year would it have been whenever, like, uh, the freaking movies for Harry Potter were a big thing? Mm-hmm. I think I was in, like, th- uh, fifth grade or something like that. Probably like, witchcraft and shit? Yeah, and parents like, were yeah. scared. I remember, like, we went to, like, we had to take permission slips to get our parents to uh, to sign them, and it was, like, a PG movie. And like the other movie that was in the theater at the time was a uh, uh, Monsters Inc. Mm-hmm. And so if you if your parents didn't want you to watch the PG movie, you could watch the G movie that's also on. And I remember like kid, kids actually couldn't get the permission slip signed. And I remember taking it to my parents and be like, "Why the fuck is this a permission slip?" <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why would I? It's PG. That means kids can watch it. What, are they stupid? <laughs> Parental guidance is suggested. Oh, I guess that is what it means. But they were—I was used to watching horror movies and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's absolutely stupid. We had to get um, parental permission slips to go see James and the Giant Peach because I think that was PG. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I remember I remember taking that to school in first grade to watch it the VHS. Oh, really? Yeah, that came out in theaters when I was in fourth grade. But uh, yeah, I don't know. The whole thing is. It's like Nightmare Before Christmas came out, you know? That was... You know, my grandmother would have never taken me to see that because it's all Halloween-y and looks like devil. Like, oh, you know? It's like, come on. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a fucking musical. <laughs> it's like they're singing. Yeah. It's just... there's a, it's, um, I don't know. It's it's just... The whole thing is silly. But bottom line, it's a different world now. Um, they're going to be... They're going to be open. They're going to they're gonna be exposed to that no matter what now. So you have to adapt with it. You have to change and roll with it um, so you can more or less, you know, be prepared for it and the negative impacts it could possibly cause. But, you know, whatever. That, that is what I, what I... Dude, this pod, this episode was all over the place. I got to admit, guys, I apologize. Uh, I don't know. Did we talk about video games in this one? Fuck. That um, episode could have been two, actually. Golly. I mean, we th- we're going to call this episode 
Anita. Attitude. No, that's a that's a fucking Mitch Hedberg line. Uh, no, I, it's just weird. We started talking about Anita. Attitude. Oh, yeah. The Mitch Hedberg. I'm going to call <laughs> that one Attitude. <laughs> What's the deal with sesame seeds? <laughs> what the fuck is a sesame? <laughs> <laughs> I miss it? that dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we've touched on everything. We started with Anita, and so that was the connection to the video games. And then, but we we start we trailed off with the uh, the online shit and the hypocrisy. We went into Hulk Hogan's, uh, we <laughs> went into fucking James the Giant Peaches. We went into like uh, modern corruption, and oh, it's crazy. But you know what? People do. And but basically, you know what? We can all stem it to. We can stem it to. Violence in video games and the impact it does or does not have. There you go. It's about video games. Uh, but let us know if you have any commentary about any of the bullshit that we just talked about. Uh, oh, fuck. If you like Mitch Hedberg, props there, too. Um, do you have dreams where... <laughs> what is it all? What does he say? You're doing one thing and all of a sudden the next thing he knows he's making a fucking go-kart with his landlord or what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> I forgot what that one was. Oh, it's like, one minute I'm doing I this. Gonna, I thought you were going to say, man, I'm tired of following my dreams. I'm just going to let them go ahead and I'll catch up to them later. My teeth got so much tartar, <laughs> I don't have to dip my fish sticks in shit. <laughs> a- actually, that's kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to get my teeth whitened, but I figured I'll just get a tan instead. <laughs> anyway, let us know what you think. Uh, YouTube, subscribe, share. And, uh, yeah, commentate anywhere. iTunes as well. Subscribe, share, uh, subscribe to us there and feedback everywhere. We love it. We'll, uh, we'll definitely respond to feedback and the websites, the social medias. We're all over the place. BTMReview.com. Also, check out Zach's podcast, Mac and Zach. Uh, we, what's the official, give the official details on that because we never pitch you and it's just one of those things where we just forget about it. Yeah, I always forget. It's Mac and Zach save the world. Did you really save the world? Are you going to save the world from all the fucking people and the, the PC police and the internet corrupting our youth? Is that what you're here to do? <laughs> you know, what's funny is whenever you mentioned, you're like, yeah, I, whenever you first got your iPhone, you're like, I, yeah, I, I. Oh, the I, other, the other subs- podcast. I yeah, I subscribed I was to Mac to... and Zach and I, I subscribed to your other one too. I was like, what other one? <laughs> and then you showed me and it was like, what the fuck? It was Mac and Zach's, what was it? Uh, Mac and Zach to the future. Mac and Zach to the future. Me and, and just, like me and Mitchell on the next episode, we're gonna be like, we we're gonna talk about it. We we're gonna they're basically doppelgangers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We were basically gonna talk about how we can only save the world now, but they can go back in time and save the world <laughs> and make it so that we never did. So really, they're the podcast you should be listening to. Uh, it's funny. I don't think I, I think that's the first one I found. And I just assumed that was you. I'm like, you guys got a new one? I described to it. Yeah, fun. You, yeah, you and can even, find it. And I was looking at the little animated pictures they had. I'm like, this kind of looks like him. <laughs> it was it, everything was kind of comparable. I'm like, this is legit. It's from like an alternate reality where it's like our twins. Yeah, it's so funny. But yeah, um, you can find that at m a z s t w dot t k. Rock on. And you know what? For fuck's sake, go and check out Mac and Zach's feature too. Just go look it up on iTunes. It's, it's probably there. better, to be honest. <laughs> they can go back in time. Oh, God. All right. Well, I'm Aaron, and uh, this is Zach. Adios.